back in May, uh, the 6-5, Dan and Pat, uh, we went to IBM Think. And IBM made a ton of announcements about AI. And, and by the way, over the last two months or three months, it, it isn't necessarily unique. Everybody is making AI announcements uh, primarily because of the impact that it has in the company's valuation and stock market. So this has become a, a board to uh, executive leadership team to everybody else. And it's very similar, by the way, uh, I think, uh, the same froth we saw when web first came out, e-commerce came out, mobile came out, right? What's your mobile strategy? What's your e-commerce strategy, right? We saw a ton of companies getting disrupted uh, through e-commerce. And so the boards wanted to know, what is it? And then, hey, what now, what's your generative AI strategy? So the good news for IBM is they've been working on this uh, a lot longer uh, before the, the before the froth. And in fact, uh, they went GA uh, on Vela, which was their training uh, supercomputer cloud uh, to be able to train uh, these big models. And um, what IBM did announce was a service called Watson X. And there's there's three elements to it. There's the dot AI, and that's to train, validate, tune, deploy models. There's the dot data, which is essentially a data store for for AI. Uh, and then governance, dot governance, which is uh, to enable responsible, transparent, explainable data and AI workflows. Um, and to its credit, this week, it went freaking GA, general availability. So I did some digging, right? I, I got with IBM. Uh, I think we had two calls, 10 emails, 15 documents. Okay, what actually went GA? And it's not because, oh, gosh, I don't trust IBM, or but Dan, Pretty much everybody that we're looking at, it's not GA. And in fact, there's a very large vendor uh, doing uh, generative AI uh, as a service that can't even explain how they price, <laughs> right, uh, here. But today, for so uh, what went GA? Dot AI uh, and dot data. You can swipe your credit card, multiple countries, multiple languages and uh, six models running on the IBM cloud, which by the way is full of you know 80 gig A100 GPUs and very high performance clusters. So uh, one IBM model, it's an NLP model, 150 million parameters, and you can fine tune the heck out of that thing. As interesting, more interesting uh, to our audience, five hugging face models available GA for QA, generate, extract, summarize, classify up to 20 billion parameters. And you can do inference on all these models. Uh, so, so what, <laughs> right? Like, like, why is this even part of the show? We, we rarely do GA. Again, I am unaware of any other enterprise grade service or large language models, <coughs> large model, any large models, uh, even if, if, if they're not language, uh, that is GA today. So props to IBM and it just shows a um, how ready they were for this did not catch them by surprise and how quite frankly ahead they are of even every hyperscaler. I'm not aware of any GA service that uh, any service that's GA that supports bedrocks not, Google's not, Azure's not, um, uh, and I don't think that Oracle is uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, the the onslaught of GA will come. I think in an era where there's a lot of nervousness about data and where data resides, the enterprise graph, how that data gets intertwined with the large language models, how that data then gets used. Um, trust is a really important currency in this particular arms race to compete. You know, I think we've seen, and Pat, I remember seeing your tweet or LinkedIn post about your sort of declining utilization of generative tools already. And, you know, um, I don't think you're alone. I think data is pointing to the fact that people have a little early fatigue. They're almost as bored maybe 
as they are with uh, Meta Threads after a week. Um, thought, thought, thought that one would get you. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, but it's not so much that they're bored. It's just that the use cases of trying, you know, what, what, you know, in a lot of ways, the LLM, the new chat bots are basically the next wave of search, right? It's a new way to organize and distribute, you know, what's old is new again. You know, remember Cliff Notes? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome oh, to very much so. Welcome to what you know. So this is kind of an instance of what's old is new again. Google originally did its thing to organize all the world's information, and now we're organizing it and giving cliff notes to people because people are, you know, you could argue people want to be more efficient, or we're just so lazy that we don't actually have to click the links to figure out what information is good. I think it's hopefully about being more productive, but. For companies, and they're all the ultimate kind of uh, consumers of technology, it's about the technology being able to make them more efficient, productive, uh, offering better user experiences, CXs, innovations. And you can't do that without your data as part of the graph. You can't do it without the enterprise's data. So just having that open internet data is not really a competitive advantage. In fact, it's already proven to be a commodity. So in order to make it a enterprise success story, you need to be able to A, make the data easily digestible and ingestible, B, give tools that enable enterprises to use that data but protect it from the public internet domain, C, you need to be able to govern it so that the outputs can be trusted or secure or accurate, uh, are constantly learning, training, and evolving. You know, in uh, IBM, what's really interesting is IBM has no interest, not any, not really one iota of interest in being a consumer product here. They're not building something to try to get high adoption among broad internet users, consumers, mobile apps. They're trying to basically say, look, we are 100% committed to building a sandbox, a tool set, a data lake, and a governing platform that enables companies to successfully implement enterprise AI on a, on a, on a business-wide scale to add value for the internal and external resources of the company. So going GA was one thing, Pat, but actually building with that sort of set of guided principles makes them very interesting for this particular space. Now, I've been impressed with Vertex. I've been impressed with some of the things that OpenAI is doing. Um, I think AWS is being heavily underrated <laughs> right now for what they're going to be able to do. But I do think IBM has been very declarative, clear, concise, and by the way, early. Because it's not just about being early about being GA. They've been very early about pro the proclamation of AI, hybrid cloud, and the enterprise and their commitment to basically building tools that are able to be run in those environments successfully. And that has also been a big part of their recent um, ascent into profitability, into growth, into scale. Now, you know, is this going to be the catalyst of IBM breaking away from mid single digits and single digit growth into doubles and beyond? It could be, but it is the most com it is the most compelling. I mean, if thing. it's not this, what is it going to be? I mean, it, it I mean, could be Red Hat, right? I mean, I like Red Hat a lot. And by the way, Red Hat's a big part of this story is the ability to do hybrid uh, enabled uh, enterprise AI. So I like it. I'm happy to see it go GA. I'm really eager to kind of start to hear some of these customer stories come to life, hearing how customers are using this to, you know, to speed up and amplify and successfully deploy enterprise you AI. Don't sound very, you don't sound, it's funny, we went crazy when Microsoft brought up, was first with, and went GA. Like we both went crazy about them. We gave them a, a ton of credit with the caveat that, hey, but like, is this is no, I, I see this as the same thing. I see IBM right now in the leadership role uh, for enterprise generative AI, uh, right now it could change because they're freaking GA. That's a huge deal. It's a it huge is a huge deal. deal. Uh, it is a huge deal. I, and obviously you can, hopefully, you know, you can hear my, you know, my enthusiasm. I'm cautious because um, I do think you're going to have an onslaught of GAs in the oh, near future. And based, listen, and based on the markets that uh, IBM is only targeted at, at, uh, I, I think IBM is going to have success in regulated industries, large yeah. enterprise. Okay, that is a that is a a a sub variant of the pie, right? Where these other folks, 
right? It's it's just like as a service, who's going to have a bigger as a service Dell and uh, sorry, as a service on prem uh, business Dell or HP or HPE? It's going to be Dell. Why? Server storage, networking, security, and PCs. It's kind of an inevitability, but they're behind. So uh, kind of the way that I look at it. Well, and, and 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 so it's it's sort of a similar parallel. Like I said, I'm actually very bullish. I just think uh, it's going to be interesting to see how fast this gets deployed and how quickly kind of these customer use cases come. And I think you made a great point about the regulated industries, but I'm actually very, very impressed. I think the governance is being the underrated thing. And I think, and I said this, um, the, some of the public concerns about some of the, the uh, you know, big public cloud LLM uh, technologies should really play to IBM's favor. They should be able to use this and create some momentum, you know, in a way, of course, they have partnerships with all those players, but in, in a way that says, hey, we really have narrowed it in, built it in and, and squared our entire presence around being governed, managed, secure. Your data is your data. Everyone's saying that, but with IBM, it's something I think the customers will be able to believe from the from the on from the onset.